The Caravan Channel. Sponsored by Adrian Flux Insurance. Welcome back to The Caravan Channel and the NEC Motorhome and Caravan Show. We've got masses more to bring you from the show. Lots of news, lots of reviews. Now, how do I get down from here? Now, one of the things I've noticed at the show this year is the number of continental manufacturers. This here is one of three stands with Arebas on show, including this rather natty gold cutaway, so you can see the construction of the thing. Moving around here, there's Knaus over there, and there are Knaus models at the entrance to every hall. And also, silver. Now, silver is produced by Trigano. There's a main stand just up the road, and here the Mini Silver, which, as the name suggests, is a tiny version of the silver, which has a pop top, and you can pop it in your garage. Let's take a look around the back. Like the Kip Shelter, this is a caravan that's not designed to appeal to traditional caravanners, more likely tent campers who fancy the idea of a decent hard roof and a few home comforts, such as your fridge, cooker and a sink. The great advantage, of course, is this big wide rear door, which means you can chuck in your canoes, your bikes, all your active outdoor gear. But if you think this looks fun, check out this one over here. Well, didn't I promise you fun? This thing is so fun, it even says fun all over it. This is the Canal Sport and Fun. And at £14,500, it's about the same price as most entry-level caravans, but completely different inside and out. It's more like a motorhome without an engine than a traditional caravan, as you can tell from this aluminium ladder, which leads up to a big roof rack on which you can strap your bikes and everything. Let's take a look inside, obviously going in through the back wall. So when you step aboard, you've got a bathroom in here, you've got a large wardrobe, a large tower fridge, and a fully fitted out kitchen. So what's new and different? Well, it's mainly the feel, the fit and the finish and the colours. They're really bright, really vibrant, really youthful. There's bags of really interesting storage options too. There's a rack up there, a bit like you'd find in a train. And beneath it, a massive bed, which when you lift it up, it creates a huge garage, ideal for throwing in all your bikes, all your gear when you're on the road. Now we've seen the Sport and Fun in the UK before, but for 2016 it's actually an official listed model. I really like it and I for one will be fascinated to see how it gets on on the UK forecourts. Think you know all there is to know about towing? There's a towing experience at the show and we asked one of the instructors to point out some of the common mistakes people make. One of the big mistakes that people make when they're hitting up the caravan is that they trust the green colours that come down here and on here. When we drop this towing hitch onto the ball, as that drops, that comes up and shows green. And people trust that as being locked on OK. We particularly don't trust the colour. And if we watch what happens now, as we drop that down, we can now see that's come down. We've got green showing here and we've got green showing there. That proves that the, boat, the, the towing hitch is on the ball, but it doesn't prove that the ball is being gripped by the clamp at the back. But if I wind it now the other way, you'll see that the ball is now lifting. That proves to me that the ball is now locked into position. So now we can go with the rest of the itching up procedure by now winding the jockey wheel totally off the floor into its travel position. It locks into there, give that a little tap, don't over tighten that. And then we raise the whole of the jockey purely on the wheel and lock that off. So it's now ready to travel. And if you can see now, there's plenty of clearance and it's ready to be hitched up. Now that we've got the car and the caravan hitched up together, we need to make sure that the lights work. And it's a legal requirement that the lights transfer from the car to the back of the trailer or the caravan. The biggest mistake that most people make is that when they do a lights check, they turn the lights on and then they turn the lights off. They test the foot brake and take the foot brake off. At no time do they test to make sure that the foot brake and the lights work together. And that's the same with the indicators. So what we're going to do now is first of all put the lights on to see if the lights work. We can see now that the lights are working. We're going to leave the lights on and ask the driver to put the foot brake on. We can now see that the brake 
and the lights are working together, we've got clear crisp lights, everything's working fine. Leaving the lights and the foot brake on, we're now going to apply the right indicator. We can see now that we've got a clear light, very good information given to all the drivers. We're now going to test the left indicator. And we can see now by building the kit that the lights, the foot brake and the indicators all work together without causing any adverse shorting and it's giving clear information to drivers behind. That's exactly what we want to do. One of the confusing issues is the driving licence. The licence changed on the 1st of January 1997 and prior to that, when we passed our driving test, we were given what we call grandfather rights. That allowed us to drive a car, but also other vehicles with more passenger seats, um, heavier car, and all the rest of it, and towing bigger trailers. When a person passes the test now, they are given category B, which allows them to drive any vehicle up to 3,500 kilogram. They can tow trailers with that, and if they're going to tow a caravan, which generally becomes quite a heavy thing, what we have to do to avoid confusion is to take the maximum weight of the caravan, take the maximum weight of the car, and we add those two together. If they come within 3,500 kilogram, that can be towed with a Category B licence. If the trailer goes over that weight, then we need to take another driving test called Category B plus E and it's the e-capacity that gives you more capacity to tow bigger trailers. And that is where people get confused about all the issues. You can get further information on this through the DVSA website, the DVLA website, and of course the Camping and Caravanning Club website will give all this information as well. Now that we've got the car and the caravan hitched up together, we now need to make sure that we've got an adequate view to the rear of the vehicle, which is a legal requirement. In effect, what a mistake most people make is the fact that because we're driving a big car and the car is almost as wide as the caravan, people think that they've got an adequate view. If we look at the car itself, we can see that the caravan is slightly wider than the car and therefore the car mirror will hit the caravan and create an angle which creates a blind spot. If I lean out to the side, I can see down the side of the caravan which in effect is what the towing mirror does. It extends out and looks back at an angle down the side of the caravan. If I look to this side, I can't see the back of the caravan and that's the view that the driver's door mirror is giving me. So we need to put the extended mirrors on and the legal side is that you must see at least four meters out and 20 meters back down the side of the caravan. They probably won't appreciate me for saying it, but Coachman has never really been seen as a mould breaker. But at this year's trade launch, they brought along a couple of real surprises. Firstly, weights were down across the board, which opens up the brand to new buyers. And secondly, there was this, the new Coachman Pastiche 470. At a little under £20,000, it isn't exactly cheap, but spec levels are high. There's all the Alco goodies, external 230 volt and gas barbecue sockets, access to the storage space and alloy wheels. From the outside, it doesn't look like an awful lot has changed, apart from the new blue decals. But it's inside that there's a real difference. And here it is. Unlike just about any other van in the UK, this one doesn't have a front lounge. Instead, we've got this lovely big double bed up front. Now, is that a good thing? Well, it depends on your point of view. If you don't like having to make a bed each night, take it down every morning, it's perfect. However, if you really like to lie back and relax on the sofas of an evening, you're going to struggle here, because the only place to sit down is here in the dinette area. Unless, of course, you have a nice big awning. Now, in the UK, this kind of layout is very, very unusual. But on the continent, a fixed front double bed is really quite common, and you do all of your relaxing outside under the awning. Elsewhere, there's plenty of space. There's a lovely kitchen area with a really high spec, featuring a separate oven and grill, a dual fuel four burner hob and a very natty chrome mixer tap. And you've also got a nice big sideboard area here where you can place your TV, your DVD player, slightly oddly your microwave above, you'll have to try and avoid mixing up the two. And there's plenty of storage options. There are cupboards throughout, lockers throughout, a big wardrobe and of course a massive storage area under the bed. It's a colossal storage area and there's even a neat little alcove so you can reach right to the front. To be completely honest, this living space does feel a bit squeezed by having that bed taking up so much of the front of the caravan. But that said, there's a really pleasant ambience in here, 
The kitchen is really good size, feels really spacious, well laid out. My only quibble being that the fridge is tucked away here underneath the wardrobe. And the dinette area is really spacious, comfortable for two adults, and you could even turn it into a single bunk at night should you have one of the grandkids over to stay, which just leaves the washroom. And what a fine washroom it is. There's a lovely big shower unit, a really good sized sink, although it is a little bit low set for my liking. And I like the fact that there's a smoked glass window so you can keep your privacy. There's plenty of space around the loo and even a heated towel rail from the Aldi wet central heating, which is new for the pastiche this year. There's little doubt that this caravan isn't going to appeal to everybody, but then that's what layouts like this are all about. They're appealing to the few and for those few, it's likely to be absolutely perfect. I've yet to be fully convinced, but I'll tell you one thing I am completely convinced about is this bed. It's simply enormous and incredibly comfortable. So if you'd excuse me, I'm going to have a little nap now. There are very few caravans that can truly call themselves world beaters, but there's a tab at the show today that can do just that. In fact, it's a Guinness World Record holder. But it's not this one, it's this one. This amazing machine is built entirely of Lego. It took a team of specialist builders 12 weeks and more than a thousand man hours to complete. And it's Lego from its gas locker to its grab handles. This amazing creation was the work of a company called Bright Bricks. All they do is build incredible Lego structures. It took a team of 12 people to build it. As you can tell from the alloy wheels, this thing actually sits on a proper Alco chassis. So in theory, you could tow it, as long as you don't mind arriving at your destination with a big pile of bricks. Everything else, however, is made of Lego, from the windows to the body shell to these tail lights. In fact, there are more than 215,000 bricks making up this caravan. But it's not just an empty shell. I'm told there's a few things to see inside as well. Now, to get access to this van, we've had to come in before the show starts, which means I've had to skip breakfast. Luckily, however, the kind builders here have laid on beans on toast, there's some fried eggs sizzling on the cooker, and there's even running water in the tap so I can make myself a cup of coffee. Incredibly, everything in here is Lego, from the cupboard doors to the hinges that hold them to the shelves inside to even the bunch of flowers on the table. It really is amazing. And this table I'm sitting at is on a telescopic mount and it turns into a double bed. Although, judging by what it's like to sit on, I'm not entirely sure it would be very comfortable to lie on. So I've got my cup, I've got my pot of coffee, I just need some milk. I'll just check in the fridge. It's good. <laughs> judging by the reaction from visitors to the show, I think these Lego caravans could really catch on. I've just got one question. How many pages in the instruction book? Adrian Flux Insurance, proud sponsors of The Caravan Channel.